What's going on Dolph fans? It is your boy Dylan and I'm here to do my preview video for the Washington Commanders game. Obviously this is an away game for the Dolphins. Uh, so, you know, road game. Uh, it's really only one of the last two though because obviously we have this one and then we have the Baltimore Ravens in Baltimore a little bit later. Uh, but for now, for now, for now, for now, uh, we got one left. Uh, we got one left after this. But for now, we're going on the road to Washington, and um, yeah. So let's just go ahead and get into it. Obviously, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a look at the injury report, um, which for some reason, like, I don't know. It's weird. When I do my video on Friday with the, my preview video on Friday. Um, Sometimes the injury report's not done. I mean, like, if you saw my last video for last week's game, the, the Black Friday game, um, I mean, I think I, I did it Thursday because it was, you know, game was Friday. But the injury report, it just, it wasn't, you know, fully filled out. I don't know. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Sometimes I got to find it in a different place. It is what it is. But anyway, let's go ahead and bring that up. We're going to start there. Then we're going to get into, you know, we'll take a look at the... Uh, um, like current statistical standings for both teams. And then, you know, I'll give you my thoughts on this game and, and so on and so forth. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right. So, uh, you know, unfortunately the Dolphins injury report has a lot of motherfuckers on it. Um, and it looks like Cater Kohu's injury is actually new. Looks like he just got put on to the injury report on Friday. Uh, but he didn't have any game status designation, obviously, so he should be good to go. Uh, but anyway, so I mean, the the long list of players, Armstead, Chris Brooks, Lester Cotton, Javon Holland, Robert Jones, Kendall Lamb, Blake Ferguson, Tyree Kill, Robert Hunt, Cater Kohu, Raheem Mostert, uh, <clears throat> uh, Durham Smythe, Devon Achan, uh, Elijah Campbell, Bradley Chubb, Chase Claypool, Alec Ingold, Tua, and Connor Williams. I mean, Tua obviously just has the um, that laceration on his arm. No big deal. He got stitches. He's good to go. Um, let's see. Who else is notable? What else do we got? So, Javon Holland. Uh, uh, there were a number of guys that didn't practice at all Wednesday. That was Javon Holland... Kendall Lamb, Tyreek Hill, and Raheem Mostert. Although Hill and Mostert did return to practice on Thursday. Uh, so, you know, probably just veteran rest day for them Wednesday. Their usual rest day that they have a lot. Uh, let's see. I mean, Armstead was limited all week. That's good. Armstead is expected to play. Pretty sure he's going to play. Um... Let's see, Javon Holland, uh, you know, the questionable guys are Armstead, Chris Brooks, Lester Cotton, Javon Holland, Robert Jones, and Kendall Lamb, although I think Armstead's going to play. I think Kendall Lamb will probably be available. Um, let's see, uh, Robert Hunt, though, should be back. No game status designation. He's expected to play. A-Chan is expected to play. Um, and then pretty much everybody else, I would think, you know, would be expected to play. So, you know, uh, let's see, A-Chan, Elijah Campbell, Bradley Chubb, Chase Claypool, Alec Ingold, Tua Tungavailoa, and Connor Williams were all full participants on Friday, which is good. Tua was full all week because it was just a cut on his arm. Um, yeah, so even though there are a lot of guys on the injury report right now, obviously battling through things, um... We're still relatively healthy. I mean, we're, we're not in a bad situation. And, I mean, obviously, the biggest thing was the, the Jalen Phillips injury, obviously losing him for the season. So he went down with that Achilles. But I do think guys like Andrew Van Ginkle and Emmanuel Ogba will be able to fit in and pull up some of that slack. I do think that having uh, JPP will also help that situation. So I'm not really, like, worried about it. Um you know, it is what it is. Um, 
Yeah, it is what it is. I mean, this is, you know, it's late in the year and you know, you're going to have guys banged up, but we are relatively healthy and we are getting even more guys back. I mean, like I said, I do think Armstead will play. I, uh, Robert Hunt is expected to be back. So that way he could fit into that right guard spot and, um, you know, either put Eichenberg somewhere else if he's needed or, you know, give him some rest. But we are getting healthier overall. And like I said too, this game, next game against the Titans at home and then the Jets at home, I'm fine with the Dolphins resting any of these guys, any of them, for the next three weeks. We just need to have them all ready for that Dallas Cowboys game. Because I think the Dolphins, look, you know, and... Again, as fans, we can do this. The team and Mike McDaniel is good at making sure these guys don't look ahead and that they're focused on their current opponent. So I, I don't think that, you know, as a person who's commenting on the on the Dolphins or on the team, I need to worry about it. Certainly not as a fan. They're going to handle business. But I expect that the Dolphins will take care of business and they will cruise through these next three games and end up 11 and 3 by the time we play the Dallas Cowboys in Hard Rock Stadium. Obviously, too, remember, after this, we play the Titans and the Jets again at home. So, you know, good stuff there. Also, real quick, let's just take a look here at the Commanders. They did rule two players out. That is cornerback Emmanuel Forbes, which could be pretty big, actually. Um, defensive end James Smith Williams is also out. <clears throat> um, Tyler Larson, their center, is questionable. He was limited in practice with uh, on Thursday and Friday, did not participate Wednesday. And then fullback Alex uh, Arm Arma, uh, limited Wednesday, Thursday, full Friday, no designation. So he should be good to go. And obviously they don't have a ton of people, but, you know, We'll get into the actual matchups and stuff here in a minute. So that's the injury report. They don't got a lot of guys even on it. Um, <clears throat> we got a ton, but it is, like I said, I mean, it is a little, look, I know Dolphins fans have been talking about it a lot. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I, I don't know about the fans per se, but I know that some of the Dolphins, um, <clears throat> like beat writers and stuff have been talking about it. I'm not super worried about this, I mean, like I said, this is where we are in the season. Motherfuckers are going to be banged up. It is what it is, right? You just got to kind of deal with it. But, you know, this is kind of where you really need to see. You need to see the game status designations. You need, And then you need to see it with your eyes. And you need to see them on the field, right? Like Tyreek Hill, for example. I mean, he looks fine. He's battling an ankle. He's got the little hand thing, right? I don't think the hip was ever really actually an issue, but okay, whatever. Um, right? So, you know, it is what it is. Um, but when I see him on the field, he looks completely fine. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, Mike McDaniel and the, the trainers and stuff know things that I don't, and so they make these decisions ultimately. Um, <clears throat> but I think we're relatively healthy and I think we're in a good position, and I think we are actually getting, generally speaking, healthier. Um, and we did just have a, a mini buy this week, obviously, because we played on Friday. So we got a couple extra days to rest, which is nice. Um, look, and by the way, just a quick side note. I don't know. It's going to be tough. I mean, this game, this game, this upcoming week for the Kansas City Chiefs is against the Green Bay Packers in Lambeau. And obviously, you know, the Chiefs are not the same old, like, high-powered juggernaut Chiefs. Their defense is better than it's been since uh, Patrick Mahomes has gotten there. But, you know, they do have their struggles, and they have lost to teams that they shouldn't have, and so on and so forth. And, you know, the Packers are playing really good right now, and they have to go on the road into Lambeau. So there is a chance, man, that the, the Chiefs could end up losing and if I'm being honest with you, I would love, 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 love nothing more than for the Chiefs to get upset this weekend in Lambeau, drop a game, thereby giving the Dolphins an opportunity to at the end of it. Now, we would still have to run the table. So, it, you know, to be fair, um, you know, 
it would still be a, a, a little bit of a long shot, especially since we have to go play in Baltimore, but it's definitely doable. Um, that would give us a chance at the number one seed, which would be fantastic. And then next week, they could go in and beat the Bills, which is in Arrowhead. They could beat the Bills in Arrowhead and it would feel, you know, great and comfortable, right? Because at least in that case, then, you know, that would give the Chiefs the one loss that the Dolphins need to get the number one seed provided we win out. It would also then give the Chiefs, you know, more opportunities down the stretch to potentially drop another one just in case we happen to lose to one team in particular, most likely would be the Baltimore Ravens. Um, because I, I feel pretty confident that we're going to actually win the rest of the games, even against Dallas and even against Buffalo. Uh, you know, people are like, can't beat good teams, whatever, bullshit. I think that's a stupid narrative that's not actually really founded in much of anything, uh, you know, f tangible. So um, aside from the fact, the only thing people can say is, is that, well, we didn't beat good teams when we played them and teams and and to define a good team is simply by defining record. And that is with a winning record, which is true, but the Broncos have a winning record. Now the bills are like 500, right? So, I mean, and the chargers who were a playoff team, by the way, the giants also were a playoff team last year. No, you know, nobody expected them to be shit. It was a shootout in week one. And, you know, for those who want to use the record going into the game, I don't know if people know this, but the Chargers were fucking 0-0 zero and zero because we didn't fucking, nobody had played yet. It was the first game of the season. So it's just a ridiculous narrative, but the Dolphins are going to dispel it. I'm not even fucking worried about that. It is what it is. They're going to handle business. They're getting better and better each week. I think the offense is figuring things out. Anyway, that's kind of side tangent -y shit. Let me move on because I am actually talking about this game. But I'm just I'm just excited and, and there is possibilities. But then it, anyway, just to finish that thought, because I do, obviously I do want the Bills to lose. And I think, I think the Chiefs are their next, you know, loss. Um, but I also want the Chiefs to lose. And the Bills could potentially be the next game that the Chiefs lose. But there is maybe a glimmer of hope for this week with the Packers and them having to travel and go into Lambeau Field. So in an ideal situation, the Chiefs would lose this week against the Packers, giving us the best chance going forward to get the number one seed, whether we have to either win out, which is possible, or even if we do lose to Baltimore, it still gives them some time to also lose another game. So it's still up in the air and potentially could happen. Um, but also... Um, uh, you know, yeah, it just, it's, it sets the, it, oh, and then that way, you know, the Bills could lose next week and, you know, cause I mean, look, next week's game, honestly, it could go either way and I'd be happy, but then I could happily have the Chiefs lose next week, knowing that we still have an opportunity to, to take the number one seed cause they'll have one more loss than us. And I could feel good about them beating the Bills next week. Uh, and just basically eliminating them from not playoff contention, but at least the, the division championship, right? So anyway, let's get back to this. We're going to go ahead and get rid of that. And we're going to go ahead and pull up these statistics now. So let's go ahead and start off with the Washington Commanders. Uh, let's see. So offense, uh, let's see, overall statistics. <clears throat> We'll start off with the overall statistics. Offensively, they're 20th in points per game, 14th in yards per game, 21st in points per play, 19th in yards per play, third down, uh, 18th in third down conversion, 20th in fourth down, 11th in red zone scoring, not bad there, and 15th in touchdowns. Um, I'll get to you know my thoughts. Let me just run through this really quick, and then I'll get to my thoughts on the actual team. Now, defensively, they're 32nd in opponents points per game, 29th in yards, 32nd in points per play, 30th in yards per play, 18th in third down, 25th in fourth down, 20th in red zone scoring, and 32nd in opponents touchdowns per game. Rushing statistics, they're 32nd in rush per play percentage, 6th in yards per rush, not bad there, 30th in rushes a game, 25th in yards per game, 15th uh, defensively. You know, mostly middle of the pack in their rushing statistics. Uh, passing offensively, you can obviously see in pass percentage 
and let's see, completion percentage and passes per game, they're number one in the league. They're very, 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 very pass heavy. And that's one of the big reasons why Sam Howell actually leads the league right now in passing yards because they hardly ever even fucking run the ball, which will be good for the Dolphins. Again, I'll talk about that more in a second. Also, they haven't had their bye yet. So he has one more game than let's say Tua, who I expect to to take that lead back over here very soon. Um, anyway, and then they're, you know, besides that though, they're in the middle or bottom of the pack when it comes to their statistics, uh, defensively, same thing, mostly middle or back end of the, the pack. I mean, obviously they're not a very good team overall. They have had coaching changes. Ron Rivera's taking over play calling for Jack Del Rio, right? Uh, also they did get rid of their top two pass rushers, Chase Young and Montez Sweat. Uh, before the trade deadline, which completely takes away really any of the teeth from that defense. Uh, but anyway, here's their kicking, turnover, penalty, and time of possession statistics. So you can just kind of take a look at it there. Obviously, again, I mean, most of these statistics are not good. Um, so yeah, uh, there you have it. Now we'll take a look at the Dolphins. Obviously, because we're still ranked, you know, at the top of the league in pretty much every offensive statistical category, except third down and fourth down. We definitely need to get better at that. But we did raise our third down conversion percentage after this last game because we had a pretty decent percentage there. So that was good to see. Defensively, as we know, every single one of these statistical uh, uh, statistics has gone up and continues to go up. And now we're obviously in pretty much every category uh, in the top half of the league. Overall, I think right now we're like the sixth overall defense. It's like either six or seven, something like that. So we're obviously top 10 right now. And I do think, and like, you know, at the beginning of the season, I thought this defense was going to be top 10, potentially top five. And they absolutely could be after the season and by the season's over, especially since the next three games, they should be able to really pad the stats and, and all that good stuff. Okay, so rushing statistics offensively, still obviously in the top half of the league, uh, you know, or, you know, yards per rush were first, second in rush yards a game and rushing touchdowns a game, right? So obviously still top half of the, uh, stop, top of the league offensively. And again, defensively, our statistics continue to raise and we're in the top five, top 10 in pretty much all categories, right? Passing statistics, same thing there offensively, same thing there defensively. All of it continues to either stay the same at the very top or rise. And I think things are only going to continue to get better. Um, kicking statistics, turnover statistic, penalties, and time of possession for the Dolphins. And there you have it. Now we will go ahead and actually talk about like some of the matchups and, and what I'm thinking. So... Let's start with the Dolphins' offense on the field against that um, Washington Commanders' defense. So, obviously, you saw all the statistics there. They're not very good. Um, and, obviously, if you watch the games, they're not very good. Um, I think this is going to be a very good opportunity. Honestly, so let me just say this. I think this game is, is going to be another one of those games where the Dolphins live up to the narrative that's out there that they can only beat the bad teams, right? I think they're going to beat another bad team, um, you know, and I think it's going to be pretty handedly. I think they're going to, for the most part, smack that team around. I think maybe they'll kind of hang in for the, you know, at the beginning, it possibly, but that defense is really not very good. I expect a day where Tua should have a good day. Waddle should have a good day. Mostert should have a good day. Um... Hill obviously should have a good day. I would think that depending on how much they use A-Chan, but I think the the second running backs, the second and third, you know, Wilson and and A-Chan should be able to do some stuff as well, right? Like, honestly, I think that this, especially, I mean, if Armstead is at left tackle, if, if he does play, and then we have, I would expect Lester Continent left guard, with Connor Williams at center, Robert Hunt should be coming back at right guard, and then Austin Jackson at right tackle. That offensive line is almost back to basically back to full strength and good to go. I think we'll be fucking set offensively. The only and obviously Montez Sweat and Chase Young got you know traded, so their uh, pass rush really isn't 
I mean, it's really nothing since those two guys left. I mean, those were the two, that was the the bulk of the sacks that that defense had. And that was really where um, you know, the strength of the defense, but now it's gone. I mean, they still have Deron Payne um, and uh, I'm blanking on the other dude. They do have two good de interior defensive linemen, two defensive tackles, but I mean, they're not like, you know, they're both older guys. They are veterans, but they're both older guys, and they're not going to be that impactful. I think this Dolphins offensive line can handle them just fine. Not worried about that. I mean, there's definitely the secondary is not very good. There's going to be plenty of opportunities down the field, up the middle, especially if they run the, the, uh, run the ball and have some balance, which I expect them to. I expect, uh, you know, it, Mike McDaniel to continue growing and evolving and learning and, you know, um, because look, here's another thing about Mike McDaniel, like when the reporters, and this is very different than most coaches, right? That, that not just the dolphins have seen, but that you really see in the league. Like when the, when the, um, reporters, right. When they have their press conferences with him, when they ask certain questions, specific questions, like let's say short yardage situations. And they say, why don't you just run the ball? He takes that shit into account. He listens and he actually makes adjustments to that shit. And he and he takes the concerns that people are giving to him. And also, I mean, let's let and part of why that's so cool is is because that shows too that he's he's listening to the fans as well. Maybe not so much directly, but indirectly and through the reporters. Because obviously the reporters engage probably a lot more with the fans than he does. I don't imagine he spends much time on social media or really engaging with fans and he really shouldn't because he's got plenty to do and he's got to stay focused and keep his guys focused but the uh, and so the only real conduit or avenue that he would have in my opinion is through the reporters because the reporters do you know they do mailbags they they're on social media they engage with fans they do their own shows and take questions in the live chat right so my point is, is, is that those concerns filter up to, to Mike McDaniel through the reporters in those press conferences, and he actually does shit about it, which is fucking awesome. Anyway, so they're making their adjustments. I think the offense is starting to get their shit together. They are getting guys healthy again, particularly on the offensive line, and I think they're going to get clicking again, especially, at, too, as the Dolphins' defense continues to play well and gets them more turnovers so I'm really excited about that. I think things are really good right now for this Dolphins team. And I like their matchups on offense versus their defense. Now, we'll take a look at the other side of the ball. Because, again, the, you know, look, the Washington Commanders, I mean, on offense, they're pretty feisty. I mean, Sam Howell's doing some solid things. You know, out of this five-game stretch that we're in right now, I would say he's the best quarterback out of all of them. You know, Tim, we, we're not going to get to see Zach Wilson, it would seem, you know. Um, at all, but out of Tim Boyle and Zach Wilson, I would say, uh, Sam Howell is better. Will Levis? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, Will Levis could be a good quarterback in this league, maybe down the stretch, but he's having his struggles right now. And at this particular time, I would say Sam Howell is better. Um, and then who's the other one who, uh, Washington. Well, no, we play the Jets twice, Commanders, and then Titans. So that's it. So out of those guys, I mean, I think he's the better of the quarterback. I, like I said, I mean, right now he currently leads the league in passing yardage. Although, again, they haven't had their bye yet, so he has one extra game. And they're super, super pass heavy. I think it's like 70 30 something like that, pass to run. They hardly ever run. This Dolphins run defense is good, so I expect them to shut down whatever running plays they do try and do. And then, and look, I mean, they do have Terry McLaurin, uh, um, Curtis Samuel, uh, and who's their third guy? Uh... Shit, I'm, I'm blanking on their third receiver right now. But they do have a couple playmakers on that side of the ball. I mean, it's not like they're totally inept. They're not very good. And, you know, their statistics also bear that out, as well as the tape. They all, uh, Sam Howell is also prone to throwing some turnovers or throwing some interceptions and, and, and causing some turnovers for his team for his offense. Because uh, he is also a little bit of a gunslinger from what it would appear from what everybody says and from what the tape would show. It does also bear that out. So there are going to be opportunities for this Dolphins defense. And really, 
especially since week five. But uh, frankly, if you take out even just that week one game, the Dolphins really have been one of the better defenses in the league. But specifically since Ramsey came back and since uh, week five, they have just been stellar and really have been one of, one of, if not the top defense in a number of statistical categories. So I really expect that to continue. And that's what I expected from a Vic Fangio defense in their first season with these, with these guys. They got to get used to it. They got to install everything. They got to learn how to work together and everything within that system. And right now they're playing great. And besides Jalen Phillips, they are healthy. So I'm loving to see it. It's amazing. It's amazing. Amazing. Um, Okay, so here's the thing, right? At the end of the day, I expect this Dolphins team to just basically dominate this game. Frankly, as as far, look, and again, I'm a fan, so I can do this. The next three games, I expect this Dolphins de- uh, this Dolphins team to go out and dominate. I expect over the next three games, anybody who's still banged up that needs to sit and rest, I expect them to rest and get ready for that last three-game stretch against the Cowboys, against the Ravens, and then against the Bills to end the season, right? I expect them to do what they need to do to get them ready for elimination games in the playoffs. I expect them to be playing for seeding uh, because they will have wrapped up the division by Christmas in those last three games, right? Um Yeah, so, oh, and I expect, I also expect this to be a time, these next three games, a time for both the offense and the defense to pad their stats, right? For uh, this offense to, you know, continue to solidify themselves as the overall number one offense in the league. And maybe again, even take over the, uh, as the number one rushing offense in the league, because I would love to see this offense end as the number one passing and rushing offense in the league. That would be amazing. It would be an opportunity for them to, you know, practice and and um, um, try some things, experiment with some things offensively in live games because these opponents are not all that great, right? You know, experiment a little bit, figure some things out, maybe it, particularly when it comes to short yardage situations, right? And goal to go situations, those types of situations that they need to improve. Third downs and stuff like that, right? There'll be some opportunities in these games, to experiment a little bit. So in part, by the way, I say that in part because if the Dolphins do stuff like that and then they make some mistakes and maybe even turn over the ball or something like that, you know, we need to take that into consideration because they might do that. They Over the next few games, they might experiment with some shit, right? Anyway, so I, I look, Dolphins are in a better situation than they've been in the past 20 years, even in 2016, you know, even in 2008, even in 2000, like since 2000, since we won a fucking playoff game, the Dolphins have never been in a better situation. And frankly, even since, even counting that, I still think we're probably, this team is primed and ready and so many things are falling into place for the Dolphins. And I think it's fucking awesome. I think it's amazing. Um, So let's go ahead and get to the final score prediction. I do think that I mean, I'm terrible at score predictions, you know, um, it is what it is, but let me go ahead and like I said, I do think that this is going to be a dominant Dolphins win, not just take care of business, but I think they're going to really, you know, dominate on both sides of the ball. I think Sam Howell and that offense are really going to, you know, come down to earth, um, a bit when it comes to their passing game because our 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 secondary in particular now that we have a healthy Ramsey and Howard back there I mean it's just good things so I'm thinking let's say 43 to 17 43 to 17 how about that 43 17 42 no 42 17 cuz I don't think Or maybe like 45 or something like that. Or 38. I don't know. Something like that. Because I I just, I don't see us scoring too many. I don't see us kicking too many field goals. I see it being like, you know, touchdowns, touchdowns, touchdowns on most of our drives. I think we'll get rushing touchdowns, passing touchdowns. I think we're going to have a fucking heyday. I think this offense is going to look, you know, prolific and clicking. I think they're going to play a cleaner game. I think they're going to 
not have any turnovers on offense, but get turnovers on defense. So let's say let's say 38 to 45, somewhere in that range for the Dolphins. I'm giving myself a, a window here. And then um, 17, 14 to 17 for the Commanders. All right, there you have it. I'm going to get up out of here. Make sure you guys, you know, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, you know, share my channel, share my videos with friends, family. I am trying to grow my channel, so it would be great to have your help in doing that. I am trying to, you know, turn it into something. I know I've been working on it for several years and kind of had my ups and downs with life, so I haven't been able to always stay consistent, but I am really trying to build this thing and and hopefully you know, before uh, too much longer, I can turn it into my full-time job as I've been wanting to do for some time now. So anyway, I would appreciate the help from anyone and, and everyone to do that. Like I said, hit the like button, subscribe, leave comments. I try and answer them as long as they're not like obviously and blatantly like disrespectful and, and shit like that. So, you know, um, as long as they're respectful and reasonable comments, I, I try and always respond to all of them with, even if it's just a little, you know, the little heart, uh, to say that I like it and appreciate your comments and stuff. I try and always at least interact and engage, whether it's a response or just the little heart um, thingy, um, the little heart-like or whatever. Anyway, I'm gonna get out of here, guys. Fins up. Let's keep this train rolling and let's keep it going, baby. Seven seconds left. Tannehill will throw it.